In 2016, a gruesome crime gripped the nation of Poland. One that saw the country thrust into the international spotlight. At the centre of this chilling case was a seemingly unassuming librarian from Warsaw. He was called Kajetan Poznansk. This unlikely suspect was accused of a brutal act. The victim being an Italian translator. He was motivated by an intention as macabre as it was horrifying, cannibalism. After he committed the gruesome crime, he did not stick around to face the consequences. Instead, he was hunted by Interpol. His face plastered all over international news. Poznansk, the mild-mannered librarian turned killer, had become one of Europol's most wanted men. I mean it when I say Poznansk was mild-mannered. I'm not joking. This guy was your quintessential librarian. To think that he could be so cold-hearted, so calculated. He would later testify in court that he killed the woman for some kind of self-improvement plan. Before we start, I want to say a quick thank you for watching and I release videos weekly. So if you want to see more, please hit the like button and subscribe if you are new. It helps me out. Thank you. Kayan Poznanski hailed from a distinguished family in the Poznan area. They were well respected and well connected. His mother served as a public prosecutor in Poznan, upholding law and order in their hometown. His father, on the other hand, was a successful entrepreneur, running a graphic design and image strategy company. Pazansky's sister also showed a knack for business, owning an architecture firm in the city. His grandfather, Stanislaw, held a prominent position in society as a respected journalist. However, Poznansk chose a path that took him away from his family ties. A few years before the crime, he cut all contact with his family, distancing as much as he could from his mother and his sister. His lifestyle during this period could best be described as unconventional and even controversial. Poznansk claimed to be on a mission to perfect his body and his spirit, a pursuit that involved rigorous physical exercise and discipline. This lifestyle, while unusual, gave no hint of the darkness that was soon to be unleashed. Poznansky was keen on his education, holding degrees in journalism and classical philology from the prestigious University of Warsaw. His academic pursuits didn't end with his studies. He operated the Prince and Beggar Portal, part of a scientific circle bearing the same name, and contributed to the student magazine called PDF. Poznansky then found work in a library. Whilst there, he began writing poetry about killers he admired who had carried out premeditated murders. Interestingly, Poznansky held a deep fascination for a certain infamous character, Hannibal Lecter, a fictional serial killer known for his cannibalistic tendencies. This obsession reached an extent where he composed a Latin poem titled Hannibalis Lecter Senna, meaning Hannibal Lecter's Feast. Here is a segment, assembling here for the feast of the Holy Muse, my feasting of slaughter. This was later published in a yearbook dedicated to the culture of the ancient world by the Polish Academy of Sciences. At a remarkably young age, Poznanski quickly became a respected figure in the intellectual scene of Warsaw's Wola district. He started giving lectures and presentations in libraries, 
earning his living by sharing his knowledge with the community. His lectures addressed a range of thoughtful topics, such as the importance of self-discipline for the inner freedom of man, and the problem of free will in ancient and Christian thought. However, beneath this academic veneer lurked a macabre fascination, one that would ultimately lead to a horrific act. During an internship at one of Poland's largest current affairs magazines, Posanski's unusual interests began to raise eyebrows. He proposed a number of articles focused on cannibalism, a subject that disturbed many of his peers. One proposed article, titled Famous Gourmets Between Rome and Hannibal Lecter, suggested a plan to, and quote, expose my palate to the true classics of the culinary field. Another, about Hannibal Lecter, provocatively questioned the moral difference between consuming a chicken and a human, stating bluntly, none. In another work, Poznanski wrote under the heading, How to be a good carnivore, and it added, Hey carnivores, shouldn't we kill our dinner at least once in our lives to be morally compatible with each other? He went on to criticise the disconnection consumers have from the dirty work of meat preparation and the moral objections raised by vegetarians. Yet another piece, named A Word on Cannibalism, reflected on the television series Hannibal. He wrote, what is wrong with eating human flesh? He further cautioned his readers that associating cannibalism exclusively with remote tribes was mistaken, asserting that Europe also has a role to play in this narrative. Following Poznanski's arrest, the magazine issued a statement clarifying we did not accept any of the proposals and the trainee moved to another department, where he wrote two unaccepted texts. Those who knew Poznanski painted a picture of a man who was both social and intelligent, an old friend recounting their memories of him to the local media, described him as a deep thinker, often seen with books and fully engaged in intellectual pursuits. However, he was not an introvert or a recluse. He was social and would often attend parties. But as his studies continued, those close to him began to notice a troubling change. According to the same friend, Poznanski's behavior and discourse started to become unnerving. He began to talk about strange things. Notably, he claimed to be possessed. These concerning comments marked a turning point in Poznanski's demeanor. On February 3rd, 2016, a chilling incident unfolded in an apartment in Warsaw's Wola district. Poznanski had scheduled an Italian language lesson with a 30-year-old tutor, Katarzyna Jaroskia. This was not a random act of violence spurred by a heated moment. This was a cold, calculated act of premeditation. Poznanski arrived prepared, carrying with him a suitcase, containing what could only be described as a murder kit. Among its contents were a knife and a saw, tools specifically chosen for the horrifying act. He also had plenty of cash with him, and he turned his phone off so he could essentially disappear after the murder. In the midst of a seemingly innocent language lesson, a horrifying transformation took place. Poznanski, without any apparent warning, began stabbing Katarznia repeatedly, targeting her face and neck with ruthless brutality. This horrifying assault was so gruesome and no person should ever have to face this. An additional detail that lends a further chilling element to the case is Poznanski's known fascination with samurai swords. 
he was an avid collector of these historic Japanese weapons. Numerous sources suggest that one of these samurai swords was actually the murder weapon. Although, I must clarify that I cannot confirm this with absolute certainty, but I just feel it's worth mentioning. Regardless of the exact instrument of destruction, the outcome was tragic and brutal. In the aftermath of the murder, Poznansky executed another horrifying act. He dismembered Katarzyna's body with a saw, placing the remains inside a suitcase. With his gruesome cargo, he ordered a taxi to transport him back to his rented apartment. When the taxi driver questioned the sight of blood dripping from the suitcase, Poznansky coldly replied that he was transporting the carcass of a wild boar. His original intent was to consume Katarzyna's remains, but once he arrived at his apartment, he changed his mind. To obliterate the evidence of his heinous act, he set his apartment ablaze. Firefighters called to extinguish the fire made a grisly discovery. Katarzyna's body parts scattered around the apartment. Her severed head was found in a backpack. According to local media, Katarzyna had intended to fly to Bologna, Italy, that very day to meet her boyfriend. Hailing from the Polish city of Radom, she was an experienced Italian language teacher who had studied art history and later applied linguistics at the University of Warsaw. In an attempt to justify his gruesome act, Poznanski stated that he had to kill someone to get rid of the belief that a human life was worth more than a pig or a fly. This chilling statement encapsulates the twisted logic of the man. After the murder, Poznanski, now a fugitive, fled Warsaw. He first returned to his hometown of Poznan and then caught a train to Berlin. From there, he boarded a flight to Bologna, Italy, a city where, ironically, the boyfriend of his victim lived. In Bologna, Poznanski was so relaxed that he did a bit of sightseeing. According to a local guide who had shown him around, Poznanski shown particular interest in the atomical theater of the Archignazio, a historic site where dissections of human and animal bodies were once conducted. In response to Poznanski's flight, Polish authorities issued an international arrest warrant. The manhunt was relentless. He became Europol's most wanted fugitive, with his crimes listed on their website. The search finally ended on the small Mediterranean island of Malta. 11 days after the brutal murder in Warsaw, the authorities apprehended him, marking the end of the manhunt. However, his capture was not without complications. He was found in possession of a knife and several thousand euros in cash. Even as he was being escorted to a plane for deportation, Poznanski continued to exhibit violent behavior. He launched himself at two policemen, attempting to bite one's hands and another's ear. The police officers managed to overpower him and upon landing, they applied strict security measures to prevent further violent outbursts. Poznanski was made to wear a special protective helmet to prevent him from biting others, a measure that seems eerily reminiscent of his fascination with the Hannibal Lecter movies. Has he now finally become what he desires? Poznanski's violent streak did not end with his arrest. In fact, he launched another attack while at the Roman Center, undergoing a pre-trial psychological evaluation. He made an attempt to choke the psychologist, grabbing her by the neck when she stood up to leave. Before the guard could intervene, Poznanski pulled a shattered piece of glass out of his pocket 
and struck the guard. After the incident, the head of the forensic psychiatry team at the Roman Center classified Poznansky as a dangerous prisoner and ordered him to be restrained by a straight jacket. Despite his volatile behavior, psychologists concluded that Poznansky did not suffer from mental illness, which would limit his ability to control his behavior. In court, the prosecutor said he was looking for a victim. He decided that it should be a stranger, that it should be a language teacher. Katarzyna, tragically, was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time chosen randomly from a website listing language tutors. They had never met before, with their only interaction being a phone call to arrange language lessons. In court, Poznansky confessed to murdering the Italian language teacher, but he also admitted to planning another murder, which didn't take place because the intended victim didn't turn up to their meeting. How lucky is that? Despite these shocking admissions, Poznansky was found to be of sound mind. In 2021, he was given a life sentence, a verdict he and his lawyers are currently appealing. Criminologist Brunnen Holst offered an insight into Poznansky's mind, stating he could have been obsessed with murder and wanted to transfer the crime from the ancient world to reality. He is a man with two faces. On one hand, he is educated and intelligent. On the other hand, he is obsessed with murder. The blend of intellectual curiosity and violent obsession created the horrifying mind of Katien Poznansky, an extremely dangerous man. That's the end of this episode. Until next time, stay sane.